Hello everyone and welcome back to another From the Depths video tutorial. Now this is part two of my breadboard tutorial series, if I can call it that. So I highly recommend you watch the first part first, especially if you're new to breadboards. Uh, as usual, you will find the timestamps in the comment section for all the important topics of today's video. So you can, you know, skip ahead and so on and so forth for the things that really interest you. For today's video, a special shout out to Samson of the official Discord for showing me a couple of tricks which I will reuse and demonstrate later in the video. Now, last time we played with switching AIs, but today we're going to control uh, the movement of your vehicle directly using breadboards. But before we hit the loaf, <laughs> someone commented that you know, miss some opportunities to uh, play on words with the breadboard. So here we go. Before we hit the loaf, um, here is a trick that's not only useful for using breadboards, but also uh, automated control blocks, PIDs, and of course, ye olde baguette. So whenever you're trying to steer a vehicle in any way um, using something outside of the AI, there's a good chance that the AI will try to fight you and fight this control. There's a way to stop that. And trust me on this, you don't need um, an AI PID to do this. So if we press Q on almost anything that's um, AI related, we end up in this menu. This is the menu you want to end up in. And we go into the PID tab now, the starting raft somehow has an AI PID for pitch. It, it really doesn't matter, okay? The important thing is that for anything you're trying to control, or actually, um, by default, I tend to do this for anything the AI doesn't need to control, and that's going into whatever axis that I want and setting the PID to none. So typically, this is what you would see. And now it's complaining because it's thinking that I made any, some kind of change. Um, you need to assign blah, blah, blah. You don't need to assign anything to set um, the AI to none on an axis. And this prevents the AI from even sending uh, any commands to your propulsion. This is very useful. All right, so we're back with the helicopter that I teased last time, but before we get into anything, I want to give you a quick disclaimer because before anything that I show today works, you will need to have properly set up propulsion, which is an art in and of itself. And I also make heavy use of PIDs. And although I will show ways to do it without PIDs, uh, those are all things that are topics for future videos. Maybe, possibly, perhaps, wink, wink. But seriously, no promises. So, first thing first, if I let go of this chopper, it rolls out of control. How do you fix that with a breadboard? Well, open up the interface, graphic warning, which is a little bit late, but please focus on this section of the interface because, you know, everything else is going to come later. So roll control. The first thing I'm going to need is an orientation input. I could also use an altitude input if that's what I was trying to correct. And those are the two main ones. Uh, primary target info and steering point info can be useful for yaw control. Again, later. So right now for roll, orientation input. And make sure it's set to roll or pitch if that's what you're trying to control. Yaw, as I said, you would use primary target info or steering point info usually. So for now, for our purposes, roll. And in order to send out commands, you will need this propulsion component as opposed to this one. This one will allow you to read what is being output to propulsion. And this one allows you to output to propulsion and actually control the vehicle. Again, you've got a drop down menu here if you have the component selected. And we're going to want to select roll in this case. Just connect the two. And this is basically enough for the vehicle not to roll out of control. It's very rudimentary, but it works. 
If we want to refine it, we can add a multiplier. And what we do is we put in 0 0.1 because that will basically divide our input by 10. And because this is a fraction of one, even though it's going above and below uh, minus one and one, it only goes, it only really matters between minus one and one. So by multiplying this, or rather dividing it by 10, we are making it so that the roll propulsion will not push as, as hard if it's not at least 10 degrees off. And I'm gonna demonstrate this. We're gonna unlink this and we're gonna link it this way. And I think I failed, yes. Almost went out of control, but it fixed itself. And it's still not as good as a PID would do it, but that is pretty good as it is. All right, so now you've seen very simple ways to control roll and pitch, but yaw and altitude are a little bit different. So first of all, for altitude, we're going to use an altitude component so we know where we are. And do keep in mind that you have this drop down menu with options such as altitude above terrain, wave level, sea level, and so on. And now I'm going to use a math evaluator because altitude is not like pitch or roll, right? You can be below, you can be above, and the breadboard has no way to tell where you want to be besides zero. So we're going to feed this altitude into the math evaluator. Now the first pin, if we remember the first video, is going to be A. So if I use variable A, it's basically my altitude. So we're going to use an if statement again, A and greater than. You could go with less than, it's just going to invert everything else, but same difference. So in this case, if A, or my altitude, is greater than, say, 125, and first number, actively go down at max thrust. That's what minus one is. If not, then one, go up by max thrust. And that's it. And now I just need to send that information to an up-down propulsion component. And it's as simple as that. If I went with A is less than 125, then I would do the opposite, right? I would do my altitude is lower than what I want, so go up. If not, go down. Same difference. And if we let the vehicle go, it's keeping altitude. It's bouncy, but it's keeping altitude. Again, PID things. If we go back for yaw, this is a gunship that likes to point at the enemy. So the very simple way to get this done is to use a primary target component because this fourth pin here tells you where the enemy is relative to you. Now here's a neat trick, and we can also combine this with what I've shown you before by using, say, a 0.1 multiplier and feeding this straight in there. Now again, propulsion component, and normally you would want to send this to yaw, but because I'm doing something fancy here and try to get around potential bugs, I'm not sure, I'm using B as my yaw axis. But just typically set up your yaw properly and use yaw and it'll work. And now what happens if I spawn a poor poor marauder? We're gonna turn around while maintaining altitude. And if we go past, we're going back and going past, going back, and we're roughly pointing at the enemy. Once more, PID things. If you had a PID set up properly, you could smooth things out. I'm gonna show you ways to use PIDs with breadboards and some even fancier tricks in the next little bit. And now, the moment everyone's been waiting for, PIDs. <laughs> So I've gone ahead and deleted just about everything from my altitude control section, except for the altitude input, 
and the altitude output. Now we're going to change our approach here and we're going to use a PID controller. And this is where the loaf shines. Now you'll notice in the top right corner we have some of the typical PID options, namely gain, integral, and derivative. But you will notice as I put in the numbers that I typically use for this vehicle, which are not exactly optimized, but whatever, um, is that you do not have an input or an output or even a set point. And that's because they are in this form. They are the pins, the connectors. So the process variable, as you can see in the tooltip here, is the top left pin. So in this case, it's going to be altitude, but it could be anything. It could be roll, pitch, whatever. On the right side, on the top as well, is the output. So just go straight there. And the magic here is the set point. With automated control blocks, you could set up, you know, some dynamics control points or set points rather, but it's rather complex. It requires more blocks, obviously. It is kind of awkward. It's less precise. Here, you can be very precise and you can go very simple, right? If I say I want this to fly at an altitude of 125, boom, I got it. If I let the vehicle go, there we go. It overshoots a little bit, but it's pretty good. Uh, one thing that's very important, oops, I'm just going to find my breadboard back. Here we go. Is that for, as a rule of thumb, for yaw, pitch, and roll, you're going to need to invert your PID. This doesn't need to be done for an altitude PID. But for these other uh, axes, you will need to invert them. And how you do that is relatively simple. You use a multiply component and you set it to minus one. And you have a couple of options here. You can either multiply the output by minus one and that'll work. But in this case, for an altitude PID, it's actually going to break it. Or you can do it the way I've done it here and multiply the input by minus one. And that just works. All right, so now we're getting to the magic part. I'm going to coach you through the things I have this helicopter do to make it more dodgy and just cool and whatever in general. So the first step is actually the last step and it's a pretty useful feature that I like is the clamp. And this is basically a safety. What the clamp does is you send a signal through it and then the output cannot be lower than the minimum value or higher than the maximum value. So this is a safety net for me. I can make sure by putting a minimum value of 50 that my helicopter will never go below 50 meters. And by setting uh, the max value to 400, it will never go above 400 meters. Why? Because I just decided so. And now here's the reason why I gave Samson a shout out earlier. And this is for a little trick. It's going to be scary, scary math, but you don't need to understand the math really to use this trick. So first of all, I put down a timer and you could switch it to other things. But for this trick, it's better if you use the total time. So you just put it down. No questions asked. Just just do it. And then you use a math evaluator. And now you're going to use very scary stuff. That's trigonometry. And again, you don't need to understand really what's going on to use this trick. So what I'm typing out here, and I'm going to add a little thing to it as well, is what I typically use. Well, typically for this helicopter, for my altitude. So what this does is it's going to take this signal and using this sin uh, operation, it's going to create a sine wave. So basically going up and down and up and down using a timer value, whatever. Now this first number here 
is how frequent the sine wave, the frequency of the sine wave. There we go. So this is fairly arbitrary. Uh, higher values will generate higher frequencies, which means it will go up and down faster. And then we multiply this by 20. Why 20? Well, this is just the maximum and the minimum value of the up and down. So by setting it to 20, it will do a sine wave between plus 20 and minus 20. And what I'm gonna add to that my base altitude that I want. And now my base altitude will shift by plus 20 to minus 20 at a rate of, I don't know, I don't know if it's 25 times a minute, whatever. And I added times B because I don't want it to do it outside of combat. And how I do that, I'm going to add my second input, put down the primary target info, and use the, is there a target? So all this fancy math gets multiplied by zero if there's no enemy. So if I let it go, it's not going to go up and down like crazy when it's outside of combat. And that's just it. And then I want to keep altitude above the enemy. So I'm going to use another math evaluator. And now I'm going to use the target's altitude as a variable. And I'm just going to say I want to keep at least... 125 meters above the target and I want to add my fancy sine wave thing to it on top of it and now just for clarity or making it clean here I'm gonna use the uh, bottom one it doesn't matter in which order they're in because it's just additions right so now I'm going to try to stay 125 meters above the enemy, plus or minus 20 on a regular beat. And I just feed that into my clamp. And now you're going to see I get 125 because there's no enemy right now. And it's also multiplied by zero. But if I spawn, let's say, a plane, whatever, and I'm going to god mode everything so it doesn't die, go back into the breadboard and you're gonna see what I mean and here we go my altitude is changing it's changing according to the enemy's altitude and it's changing over time and boom there's the first magic trick finally one last quick tip or trick because the video is getting kind of long and that's how to pitch at the enemy so we've got the standard PID setup where we have our pitch input, we invert it, put it through the PID itself, output that. Set point has a clamp to prevent it from going too far up or too far down. And then we have this because if you look here, we get NAN, so nothing. And the PID needs something to function. And it just doesn't work outside combat. So what we do is we have a math evaluator that checks to see if we are in combat. If we're not, we're sending out zero to remain stable. And if we are in combat, then we are running the math and sending it to the PID to pitch at the enemy. And how you do it is some scary math, which you don't need to, un yeah, you don't need to understand it. As I said, I'm a humanities guy. I'm not a math guy. This just works. Uh, this is basically trigonometry again and you're basically calculating the hypotenuse and adjacent or opposite. So your hypotenuse is the target distance, and then you derive the uh, other variable by subtracting, uh, subtracting the target altitude from your own, as you can see here, feed that into this operation, and then send it to the PID, and boom, your vehicle is pitching towards the enemy. And that's it. So please consider liking and subscribing for either other tutorials or possibly 
a part three where I might cover some more obscure or uh, yeah complex tricks. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.